Hey, this is Kyle from Pure Storage, and in this demo video, we're going to show how to migrate a persistent volume uh, that's been retained from one Tanzu Kubernetes guest cluster to a different one through a couple simple examples. So as you can see, we've got three uh, control plane nodes and three worker nodes in our TKC-118 guest cluster, and we're going to go ahead and authenticate against it here using the kube control vSphere login command line. So we are now in this cluster, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a cluster role binding rule that enables all authenticated users to edit this TKGS instance. Um, so now that that's been applied, we can actually do things like uh, create MySQL deployments and persistent volume claims, which is what we're doing right now. Um, the storage class name is CNS-VVols, which is inherited from an SPBM policy we set up in vCenter. So now that we've applied that persistent volume claim, we can see that it has been dynamically provisioned uh, against this TKC instance. Um, it's got a persistent volume claim as well as a persistent volume, which we can see here. Now the default reclaim policy is delete. So we're going to patch this volume to, to be retain instead so that when, the, when a pod is deleted, uh, the, the underlying persistent volume uh, sticks around. Um, now we can see that reclaim policy has been set to retain from that patch command line. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and look at our MySQL deployment YAML file. Now within this MySQL deployment YAML file, oops, my prompt got in the way there a little bit, we can see that we are going to use that persistent volume claim that we've already set up. It's a very simple, very small MySQL instance, but again, this is purely for demonstration purposes. Uh, there are no deployments in this namespace at this time, so we'll go ahead and deploy our MySQL deployment which takes it a few seconds to come up, but now we can see it's up and it is attached to that volume uh, to it, that, that persistent volume to it. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and just expose this deployment uh, through a load balancer type uh, and, and give it a service name of MySQL service. Um, now that that service is exposed, we're able to authenticate to that external IP address that's been assigned to it with the MySQL app. And the purpose of this is to take that uh, dynamically provisioned persistent volume, and we're just going to migrate a simple uh, TPC-C MySQL database into it so that we can retain it and then move it around. Um, we can see just to show, you know, there is no database on this persistent volume that we've mapped this MySQL instance to. So we'll create a database called TPCC. Um, you can see it's there on the bottom. And now we'll use it. And then lastly, we will source a MySQL dump file to populate this TPCC database with some actual data. Oops, it's dash two. Um, again, this is a very, really small uh, MySQL database, but again, the purpose here is, is just for a simple demonstration of data portability. Um, so we can see that within that TPCC database, there are multiple tables um, from the HammerDB TPC-C database. Uh, and with that, we're going to go ahead and delete this service as well as delete the MySQL deployment that we just used. And we will see that the pod, uh, or excuse me, not the pod, the persistent volume we created uh, is indeed inherited um, and, and sticks around because of that retention policy that we set to it. Okay, so that's been set. Um, what we're going to do quickly, though, is actually stand up a second TKC uh, cluster within that KGNS1 namespace. Um, so here we can see the name of this is TKC120. Um, it's in the same namespace as the existing TKC. But the big difference here is that we are upgrading from Kubernetes version 1.0. to 1.20 to 1.20 here. Otherwise, this Tanzu Kubernetes cluster is identical to the one where we just stood up that MySQL instance. Um, it'll take a few minutes for this new TKC to be stood up and come online. Um, we can see, I'll pause it here. Here we can see it's already starting to appear. There is the TKC cluster name, and then it's starting to deploy OVA templates into it. I'm going to pause it here since this does take about five to 10 minutes to stand up. And now that we're back, uh, we can see we've basically got an identical cluster um, ex with the only difference being version 1.20 instead of 1.18. So there is a little bit of work left to be done on the quote unquote old cluster of 1.18. So we're going to go ahead and authenticate into that now. 
And what we're going to go ahead and grab from the old cluster is some of that persistent volume information. So here we've got coup control get PV, and I've also you also have need to remove that persistent volume claim as well. Okay, so when we do a coup control describe persistent volume, we can see that there's a volume handle. This is a really important piece of information that you need in order to migrate this persistent volume from one Tanzu Kubernetes cluster to another. So we grab that volume claim, and now we're going to, this is a YAML file to create a new persistent volume in our new Tanzu Kubernetes cluster at version 1.20. So there we paste in our volume handle that we just found. We're giving it a new name, mysql-pv-new-tkgs. It's using the same storage class. It's the same size. Uh, and here we reference the previous claim name as well as the namespace. So now we're going to delete that persistent volume from the old Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. But again, that volume is actually still associated with the kg-ns namespace overall. So the persistent volume has only been deleted from the Tanzu Kubernetes cluster, but it still exists in that overall namespace. Um, so what we'll do here, that, this is the YAML file that we were just looking at and adding the volume handle and that other info too. So now we're creating it in the new Tanzu Kubernetes guest cluster. And here's the new persistent volume claim. The key difference here that's worth noting is that we are also including the volume name of that persistent volume that we just created. So this is a statically per, uh, provisioned persistent volume claim. Again, because we're referencing a persistent volume that we just created in that previous step, this persistent volume to be specific. You can also see that we're referencing that the same uh, persistent volume claim name here as well, and the same storage class and size. So these two things work together in parallel to enable you to move these volumes around. So now we're going to go ahead and apply that persistent volume claim with, that references that volume name. All right, persistent volume claim has been created. Now when we look at it, um, we can see it's been bound. It's bound to that new persistent volume that we created earlier. And when we describe it, we can see that under annotations, this is what you want to look for, that the io slash health is accessible. OK, we'll clear this screen. Now we'll look at our MySQL deployment once again. Uh, name this one MySQL2 because it's on a different Tanzu Kubernetes cluster, but note that the claim, the persistent volume claim name is the same here as, as the first instance that we did. Oh, and, and of course, I do need to assign another cluster role binding, another authentication role to this Tanzu Kubernetes cluster to, to be able to do a deployment. So I've just done that here. Um, and now I'm actually running that deployment YAML file that we just showed. So we're still waiting for this MySQL deployment to come up. We'll check it again. And third time's a charm. Let's try it one more time. There we go. OK, so the deployment is up. And once again, we're just going to simply expose uh, this MySQL instance through a load balancer uh, service to give it that external IP address that will allow us to get into it. Here we can see there's our service with the external IP address. So we'll go ahead and log in to it with MySQL. So as opposed to when we started this MySQL database last time, we can see that that TPCC database is already here. Again, that's because we, we statically provisioned that persistent volume. And we can see that all of the data that we previously populated it with in that old Tanzu Kubernetes cluster uh, is there. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this tied together a few different concepts. Um, there's tons more information at that VMware platform guide link you just saw. Uh, thanks again, and we will see you next time.